Hi, so my name is Michael O'Donovan and this board is Grassland, the source of a sustainable future. And Michael Egan will I'll take the first part of this board and Michael Egan will take the second part of the board. So the key thing for us is, you know, farm grass growth potential. Can we, can we get farms to realise their grass growth potential? And yes, we can, through grass clover and perennial ryegrass swards. We know from our analysis that grass clover swards are by far the most cost competitive. You know, being far, far I suppose, being far cheaper than, than perennial ryegrass swards on their own and other conserved feeds. I suppose what we, our key message today is productive farms lead to, um, lead, lead, lead to, lead to uh, profit, uh, pro profitable farms. And for the last couple of years, I suppose we've been looking at, for the last decade, we've been looking at pasture base and you, the farmers, have been measuring grass consistently uh, through Pasture Base Ireland. And what we've seen when we've looked at the uh, a match sample in the last couple of years, when we've broken that down into quartiles, we can see the top quartile producing about 14.8 tonne of grass dry matter and the bottom quartile producing about 10.4 tonne of grass dry matter, which is nearly enough feed to, to, to feed one livestock unit on each of those farms per hectare. So I suppose there's a real difference, a large difference in dry matter production between those farms. And when you look at that data a bit further, you can see that there's uh, about two grazing events per farm per year difference between the most productive farms and the least productive farms. So that's true, you know, the grazing management of the farmer himself, what he's imposing early spring grazing, I suppose faster rotations in the middle of the year and just building more grass into the autumn. So I suppose the other part of, I suppose, achieving our grass potential is, what is the variation across the country in grass dry matter production? And what, for the last three years in a matched sample, we see that there's no difference in grass dry matter production north to south or east to west, averaging about 12.9 tonne of grass dry matter uh, per farm. And I suppose that's really a key thing. It means, you know, the perceived difference was that southern farms grow more. They might grow earlier, but they don't grow any more grass than the farms in the northern half of the country. The second part of the board that we want to look at is grazing management. Is the farm growing enough grass to feed the herd? Is there too much feed coming in from imported sources? Are you feeding excessive levels of concentrate or too much silage at different points in the year? And the other, I suppose, aspect of grazing management is hitting those grazing management targets, like the, the target for opening cover, the target of 600 kilos the first week of April that you're not reducing cover too much, and having the highest farm cover in the mid-September. I suppose when we look at Pasture Base Ireland, and we look here at the, um, the average five-year growth rate for the, for, for the Pasture Base Ireland farms doing over 30 covers, you can see that there's, there's plenty of grass being grown in the system in the middle of the year, especially in the middle of the year. And this black curve is the grass demand, and you can see the grass demand is below the grass growth curve. And so what we've imposed, imposed, imposed upon this is the, is the blue graph, which is the more grass being fed to the animals and a higher grass demand across the year. And what we see is if we raise the grass demand, by about two kilos of dry matter, uh, at the stock rate imposed, we can give more grass to the, to the grazing herd. We can probably reduce the level of concentrate that's been fed in the, middle, in the middle of the year. And that means that there's going to be a higher performance coming from grass in that mid-season period. Obviously, in the early part of the year, we don't have enough grass. We're bringing in cover from the autumn. And the same thing, we're building cover here in the autumn. But definitely in the middle part of the year, we see that there's a deficit of grass being supported supported to the grazing herd that can be increased, that can take out excessive concentrate. Over the course of the open day, you're going to hear a lot about, let's say, soil management, nitrogen utilization, nitrogen mineralization, and I suppose the use of clover. And there's three sources of nitrogen in any farm. There's the soil, there's the clover in the swards, and there's the chemical fertilizer applied by the farmer. And we would, see, we would think that the total nitrogen pool to grow about 14 to 15 tonne of grass dry matter is about 450 kilos of, of nitrogen per hectare. So about 100 to 200 kilos of nitrogen comes from the soil, uh, and that can increase on clay soils. Um, as regards clover fixation, if there's no clover on the sward, you're probably applying more chemical nitrogen. And if you have high levels of clover on the sward, there's about uh, 100 kilos of nitrogen which can be fixed by the clover plant. And obviously that leads to, you know, a suppression of the level of nitrogen, nitrogen, chemical nitrogen usage on the farm. And then I suppose then the whole area here of chemical nitrogen spreading on a farm. What we see, this can vary from, you know, 150 to beyond 200 kilos. But what we see is the real emphasis now is if we can optimize the level of mineralization that takes place on the farm, if we can optimize the level of clover, which is about 30% on average across the swards on a farm, 
we can reduce the level of chemical nitrogen here to between 150 and 200 kilos to grow 14 to 15 tonne of grass dry matter per hectare on, those, on, your, on your farm. So now I'll hand over to Michael Egan for the second part of the, of the board. Thank you very much. So Mike, my name is Michael Egan. I'm going to deal with some of the content here on the second part of this board. And Michael has talked an awful lot about in terms of nitrogen and, and grass growth ability on the farms. But if we break that down to a little bit further and look at the overall precision management, so how do we manage nitrogen and our grazing management practices more, more precisely and more informed? So if we look at that and we break that into spring, summer and autumn and what we can do across the three seasons to improve that. And overall spring, if we want to increase the amount of grazed grass on farms, uh, increase the amount of nitrogen uptake and the role of clover on those systems, how do we manage that in the spring? So number one is to try and increase nitrogen utilisation, reduce nitrogen losses to the system and increase grass growth, is look at weather conditions. So ensuring that our soil temperature is 5 degrees and rising, and soils are not waterlogged and there's low levels of rainfall for the following days. So we can ensure that the nitrogen we apply is being taken up by the plant to grow the grass. Slurry is going to be a huge part of our system moving forward and you're going to see that in the demonstrations as you move on into the signpost village as well. Slurry is more, more readily available to the plant in spring, so ensuring that the slurry we apply to our low P and K paddocks to ensure we get the best bang for our buck with our slurry application. And spring, so spring is still going to be a key time in terms of increasing grass growth and utilising that nitrogen more precisely. And the role the protected urea plays in that and adjusting our nitrogen levels with grass growth demands on farm and ensuring we get the best uptake of clover of nitrogen in the system. In terms of summer, and Michael talked about, talked about it already in terms of grass growth and stocking rate demands, but ensuring that our grass growth rate is matching our grass, grass demand. So we're not, not over supplementing cows or under feeding animals, so ensuring that our grass growth rates are, are, are aligned and reducing the level of supplementation within the system. Soil water and power washings are going to be a key role going forward and ensuring that when we use that, that we're reducing the levels of chemical nitrogen that we're applying in the system in line with that. Clover, clover really takes off in the second half of the year and when we have paddocks with high levels of clover content we know we're fixing more nitrogen, reducing our chemical nitrogen in line with that so we're not over supplying the sward with, with, with nitrogen. In terms of autumn, and again Michael mentioned this earlier on in the autumn in terms of the end of the year period, we're, two, we're about four weeks away from starting to increase rotation length. So from the beginning of August we need to increase rotation by two days per week to ensuring that we reach this or achieve this peak farm cover so we can reduce the level of supplementation to the herd. Again, nitrogen is going to be a key role here in terms of clover uh, and, and the reducing our levels of nitrogen fertilizer in paddocks that have high levels of sport clover content. We've heard talked about a lot about clover and you're going to see a lot in the demo and the, and the villages as move forward again. But clover on farms, currently there's low levels of clover that's on farms. How can we increase that and maintain it in the system so we can get the, reduce our levels of chemical fertiliser and increase nitrogen fixation? We know that establishing clover on farms is going to be a two-pronged approach in terms of over-sowing and reseeding, and it has to happen in tandem with another. So we're talking about 5 to 10% of our farm being reseeded per year and 15 to 20% of our farm being over-sown per year. And it's not just put it in and leave it there, it is going to take continual management in terms of grazing management, soil fertility and also increasing the level of, of clover on farms by continually oversowing and maintaining it in those paddocks. But vitally, as clover content increases, we must reduce the level of nitrogen that we're applying, that we're not oversupplying the plant with nitrogen. And in terms of silage swords, the role that red clover is going to play in silage swords, and again you're going to see that in the demo, is vital and in ensuring that we're reducing our levels of chemical fertiliser on that in line to maintain overall herbage production. If we look at clover on farms and we look at some of the data coming in from the Clover 150 project for the last three years from 2020 to 2022 in terms of nitrogen fertiliser. So as clover content has increased and the area under clover has increased on these farms, chemical fertiliser per hectare has reduced from 230 to 160 kilos of nitrogen per hectare per year. And that has come with an increase in clover content on farms with now two thirds of the farm having adequate levels of clover on farm. But worryingly what we have seen in, 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 in last year particularly is the amount of nitrogen that's coming in from the system in terms of concentrate. So where that is, so when we're increasing the level of clover and reducing chemical fertiliser, we're only doing so on paddocks that have high enough clover content that we don't have to over supplement the cows in line with that. And while we've done this, we have maintained overall herbal production within the system as we have increased clover and reduced chemical nitrogen within the overall, overall system. In terms of moving forward and grassland performance targets in the system going forward, we've broken that into three different categories, management, swards and nitrogen efficiency. And we talk about management, we have three areas here. We need to maintain herbage production between 14 and 15 tonne of dry matter per hectare per year. 
while using more precision management with nitrogen and the role of protected urea within that system as well. And we must accurately stock our farms, so ensuring that we're not overstocking our farms or understocking our farms for our grass growth pattern and profile across the year. In terms of our sward, we have to make a huge improvement in terms of soil fertility if we want to achieve high levels of sward clover content and target at least 20%, if not more, on our system going forward across the year. In terms of nitrogen efficiency, as we see high levels of clover being coming on farms and improvement in soil fertility, we're reducing our nitrogen inputs to less than 200 kilos and closer to 150 as we get more levels of clover on farms. Ensuring that supplementation is not used as a substitute for grass, but as a supplement when we have low levels of grass growth in the spring and in the autumn, and not overusing supplement in the, in the summer. But we have to maintain overall herbage and animal performance within that system as a result. Just in terms of some take home messages, number one from us really is looking at the data that we have coming from Pasture Base Ireland is that our, our stocking rates are matched or aligned with our grass growth pattern. That we're not overstocking our farm and relying on too much imported concentrate or forages into the system. In terms of improved nutrient and slurry use that we're going more precision management, the role of clover and the role of parallel washings and slurry on, systems, on the system as well. And clover is going to play a huge role in our farming systems moving forward. We must incorporate that into our farming system and also manage it in terms of reducing chemical nitrogen inputs as we go forward. Thank you very much.